Hey folks, how you doing? Hopefully you're all having a great day today. I am looking down at my camera, which is really distracting. I've got a wide angle lens on here so you can see my apron, which is the main subject of this video. So this is kind of a, a three year update, a little bit of three year feedback on this particular apron. Uh, I purchased this apron in the, not December, in uh, August of 2017 and received it in September of 2017 and it is currently December 2020 so a little more than three years I've had this apron and I've had a newer apron that I got a month or two ago so basically there's about three years of use on this particular setup that I wanted to provide feedback for so I've got a little list of stuff to to run through to keep me on track the short answer to all of this is after three years, fantastic craftsmanship. There's no signs of fatigue to this particular product. And that's the good part. The bad part is my environment and convenience have changed. So I don't use this as the way I initially intended. And I want to change to something different, which I did. So that's the, that's the quick answer. And I'll show you the second apron that I'm using in just a minute. So the long answer is my environment and convenience changes. So this, this apron is a fully custom option. You design 100% of the placement. It is sized specifically to you as someone drives by with no muffler. Um, it is specific to you. Very, very, very custom. And what I've learned is some of the things that I initially added to this design, to this particular apron, don't actually work out in the long run due to my environment changes. So the first thing is tape measure clip. So on my right hand over here, exactly where my right hand is, I decided for my tape measure clip to go right there. Uh, this is not the tape measure that I would typically use. It's much larger. This is a 25 foot. I would use a smaller one, but I don't have any small ones with clips on them anymore. So with this, with the tape measure, I would always find myself juggling between this clip being too tight or too loose. I could never find that sweet spot. So if it's too tight, then it's kind of difficult to get on there uh, with, with one you know, quick swoop of your hand, right? And if it's also too tight, then what I find is I'm throwing my apron around trying to, trying to get my uh, tape measure off, which that's annoying too. And if it's too loose, it'd be very easy to put on, but every time I would bump into to stuff in my environment, my workbench, if I'm using a vise or something at the workbench, uh, running into that or running into the side of one of my tools, I'm not running into the tools or my assembly table or workbench, but this sticking out is, and if it was loose, it would fly off. So that was really annoying. So after a little while, I started to just be frustrated with the clip, take the clip off completely so I could stick it in my pocket, uh, and then ended up switching to a smaller tape measure like this, that I could just throw up here in my pocket. Problem solved. That's very quick, convenient, and easy. Uh, it just makes this kind of pointless. So there's that. Uh, that was an environmental convenience change. Uh, ruler and marking knife. So in these two pockets over here, I had a six inch ruler and then a marking knife. And I realized that I barely ever use the marking knife anymore. Uh, and if I do, I'm sitting at the workbench anyway, and it makes more sense to just set it in the tool well at the workbench rather than have it on me at all times. So that was kind of like a, well, I wish I would have done that differently. And then the ruler, well, I'm using a square that has a ruler on it as well. So there's no need to have the ruler and I quit using both of those. So there's that. Uh, glue rag. This is a ring for a glue rag that in theory, I thought I would love to, it just made most, in theory, I thought that I would use it and I never did. I talked to a lot of people who have these on their aprons and like, yeah, I, I love having a glue rag right there. I can wipe my hands on that. I can clean up assemblies. It's fantastic. I love it. I recommend it. I was like, okay, well, I'll give it a try. Not for me. I just, I tried this for a little while and then I just stopped using it completely because I keep my rags next to my spray bottle with water. I don't have running water here in the shop. And if I got to go get the spray bottle anyway, then the rag's right there. And it's just, it is what it is. It wasn't a convenience thing. So again, this ended up being something that I wouldn't use. Uh, square. So over here, <laughs> funny story about this square. Over here, I have my square. Now, all these things that I, I put on here are, like I said, specifically tailored to my body where I want them. So without even thinking about it, I know exactly where my square is at and I can put it away 
very easily. I say I can, but I've already gotten used to not be not having it there. Uh, so you always have your stuff exactly where you want it to be, and you, it's it's muscle memory. You don't have to think about it. You always know exactly where stuff is without thinking about it, and that's that's the point of it, right? So this particular square happens to be at the exact same height as the off button on my planer. So I have a Hammer A341 jointer planer combo machine. And if you're using the machine by yourself in planer mode, you have to feed it by yourself and of course take the material off by yourself. And if it's a bunch of small pieces, I can stack them on top of the dust shroud and I can feed right here and pull off over here. And it's kind of like, it's kind of like a symphony, right? Or a dance. You're just, you're just feeding and pulling the material. But the way my square is every time i would lean over to grab the piece off the back side of the, of the uh planer i would bump the off button and i didn't realize this for a year or so after having this machine i thought that there was just some stupid problem with this particular machine taking off too much material at once and the machine just shutting off and it didn't dawn on me until i was reviewing some footage that that is the exact height of my square and sure enough I connected the dots and found out that I'm the idiot and the machine's not that bad. <laughs> the machine's great, by the way. Uh, so, so that kind of sucks. My square is in the, the wrong spot for the environment, the tool. And I got that particular machine a year after getting this particular square, or square, this particular uh, apron. So I didn't like that. Basically, everything down here, I just stopped using. Pulled my square out. This square, by the way, uh, is a woodpecker square. Most people are familiar with these. It's all quarter inch thick aluminum for everything. And then because the blade is a quarter of an inch thick, you get a little, a little bit of parallax when you're trying to make a precise mark uh, based upon the rule around here. So that was kind of annoying. And this is also kind of annoying hitting stuff on the machine. So I switched away from using the square completely and went to one of these small um, combination squares, whatever these are called, where they loosen up and you can slide them around. This is a, a uh, blemish square, so you get the precision of, an engine, of a very precise square, but they can't sell it at that particular name brand uh, because it's got some type of cosmetic blemish, so they grind off the name brand and sell it to you at a pretty good price, which just makes way too much sense, right? Uh, so I got a nice precise square, and it's a very thin blade, six inch rule, and it just gets lost in this big pocket down here. So what I did instead is I started putting it let me back up a little bit. Started putting it in these pockets up here on the top. So I put it on this side at first, and that gets in the way, because this pocket's so high, it gets in the way of, of getting this tape measure out. So that kind of was annoying. So then I'd switch over to here, so I could still put rulers on this side, or pencils on this side. And then there's this pin right here, the American flag. And that was always annoying as well. So I thought, well, I still want my square up here. What can I do? I found these bar magnets they're pretty darn strong and they can connect together and uh, on the ends as well they fit wonderfully down in these pockets and then with that i can still use this pocket for pencils and i can just throw my square right up here and it stays and there's enough room on the back side of those magnets to put another pencil as well so i thought that's really cool and then this was basically my setup just a couple pockets up here and my tape measure, and that's it. Everything down here just became wasted stuff. Uh, so I also had my uh, dust collector remote clipped up to one of these two as well. So there's that. Fast forward a little bit, and um, I was talking to one of my friends. I think it was Jason Bent of Bent's Woodworking, and he's really good friends with Patrick and Michelle as well from Leather by Dragonfly. Uh, and I, I saw his apron, and I thought, he's got some magnets on, on his. I thought, that is brilliant. Um, I believe it was Jason. Could it be Jason or, or Hui? Hui is an uh, Alabama woodworker on Instagram. Two good dudes. Uh, one of them has a magnet on their, on their apron, and I thought that, why did I not think of putting a magnet on mine? Like That makes so much sense. I used to have a magnet on the top of my impact drill for screws and such. Super, super convenient, but it would make really good sense to have it inside your apron, especially since I know the convenience of this particular magnet setup. Um, so, Long story short, uh, Patrick and Michelle contacted me and said, hey, well, we can change, we can add some stuff to yours, or if you want to get another apron, let's, you know, just let's, let's figure something out. Uh, they offered to provide another apron for me, uh, an updated apron that I could use. And uh, I thought, well, you know, I 
that, that's so tempting. I don't want to take anything for free, but I understand that they're a small business that I really love what they're doing, and I've been providing a lot of marketing for them, so hopefully that's worked out for them, uh, which I think it has, and they offered to provide that for me, so I said, you know, twist my arm. Okay, sure, let's do it. So I got a second apron. So full disclosure, dis disclaimer there is uh, I didn't pay for the second apron. I did fully pay for this particular apron. So let me switch over to that second apron and uh, we'll talk about it. Switching from the first apron to the second apron here, I'm instantly reminded of how much lighter this one is than that one. So that's another bonus of this apron. So really quick to walk you through the process of getting a fully custom apron. So they, they send you a canvas apron like this that you put on and size the straps and all that uh, to your particular body. And of course, on the sides, they have um, some length mark uh, width markings on here. So you can determine how wide the apron you want. Of course, you can fold the bottom up or down or whatever to determine the length. But what you do is you size this to fit the way you want it to fit. And then you start contemplating and working out all the tools that you want to include on, the, on your apron and you determine a place. Once you've settled on, I want my square right there, wherever it is, then you either very carefully draw around it with, by yourself, or it's much more convenient to have somebody else in the shop with you to trace around it. And what you're doing is this canvas apron is, is literally that, it's a canvas. You're creating a template that you send back to them and they use this to create the full leather apron. So why do I have this? Well, in my situation for my second apron, I didn't need this. I just simply sent them my first apron that I have as far as fitting the size the way that I want it to fit. But I used blue painter's tape on my first apron to mark everything out. So it was, a, it was an easy transition and an easy way for them to make the second one. So this new apron setup, as you can see, there's nothing, nothing below the belt. This is all completely clean. There's nothing for me to get snagged on a workbench or snagged on a tool, but I still do have the protection of having an, a piece of leather right here, which I really, really like. I also have um, more mobility with my legs and I'm not worried about the square or anything getting in the way. Um, so everything is up on my chest. So what did I do up here? I didn't do much, but we did, did tweak a few things. I still went with this side pouch over here for my tape measure. So it lives right there. And it's because of this angle over here, right? So you have a vertical side over here and an angle side over here. It kind of wedges whatever is in there slightly. It's not tight. You can still pull this out perfectly, but I can bend over and grab stuff off the ground if I drop something and it's not gonna fall out. So that was nice. Uh, keeping this little angle here and we we specifically talked about that on the on the video chat Because uh, I just wanted you know a rectangular pocket there and, and Patrick brought up the point of of that slot sliding it from stopping it from sliding out excuse me, then I have two pencil pouches and I uh, I got the two pencil pouches once again to have my pencils in but I typically just keep them in one. Oh, these pouches by the way have a slit right here in the middle of them so if you are using a small pencil, you don't want that to get lost in there. So if you have a small pencil, you can stick it in that pouch right there. Let's just say it's this tall. You get the point, right? So these are sized for both size, uh, multiple size pencils. Two pouches here, and this one I've used for my square. Now this was the original place that I wanted this square on my last apron, but this pocket was so high that it was in the way of, of pulling this out. Now that the pockets dropped down a little bit, Super easy, doesn't interfere, and this is exactly where I want it. That is super convenient for me, and I like that. I can still, if I ever want to, use this magnet setup and stick it down like that or something, whatever. Um, but in this case, I just think the magnets are a little unnecessary. For this pocket, po pocket excuse me, magnets are not unnecessary over here. So I got two really strong magnets put in. Uh, right there, and these have been such, such a convenience since getting this apron. I recently did a 23 sheet CNC job, so there's 23 sheets of four foot by eight foot plywood. Uh, I did that in five hours or so, but I was constantly running around the machine using screws to hold the plywood to the table. I do not have a vacuum table over there, so I designate a one inch square on each one of the four corners of the sheet of plywood to put a screw in to hold it down to the table. And it was extremely convenient to walk up to the machine with my drill. My screws are always right here, put the screws in place. And when the time comes to remove the piece of plywood, I can 
take the screw out and instantly just throw it on my chest to go to the next spot, throw, take the screw out, and not, not lose the thing that I had in my hand five minutes ago, which we all know that it's super handy or super, oh, I was trying to get them all <laughs> without looking anyway. It's super uh, easy to lose what we had in our hands just a few minutes ago. So having these screws or magnets right here for screws, fantastic, absolutely love it. Uh, also on these new aprons, don't quote me on this, but I think she said that all of them come with two more loops right here to hang stuff on, stainless steel loops uh, for like, you know, dust collector remote. My last one did not have these, and um, that's for the dust collector remote. That's basically it, super simple. So uh, this is, while it is a little bit minimalistic compared to my last one, this is specific to my needs. This is specific to my wants. I get the, the convenience of having just the essentials right where I want them at all times. I get the, the added agility of not having all of this extra bulk down on my legs, and I feel like I can move and twist freely. I'm not going to say that it was obstructed with the last one, but it, because it really wasn't. But I would say that this is, I can move freely, uh, if that makes any sense. And, and yeah, I get the protection of having another layer of leather uh, on me at all times, which is, is something that I value quite a bit. Uh, I think that's it. To, I think that's all there is to talk about. I'm, I'm super happy with, with the quality of the work that they do, and I'm super happy with the actual product itself. I just can't say enough thumbs up about what they're doing. Uh, like I said, I've got nothing to gain or lose, uh, whether you do or do not buy from them. I don't have any affiliate relationship whatsoever with them. I paid out of pocket full price for my first apron, and they provided the second one for me, uh, probably because of the exposure that I've given them. So... It's just win-win, small business to small business. Uh, I think that's it. If you're interested in anything that they make, I'll have a link down in the description where you can check out their store, their social media, all that good stuff. Um, that's it. You guys take care. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you in the next video.